Hi guys, so I'm here today to do the second part of my October book haul featuring all of the books that I picked up second hand or have currently got out on loan from the library. So without further ado, let's jump straight in and let's kick things off with the books that I bought myself second hand. Now, the first book actually I'll, I'll show you is Abandon by Meg Cabot, which was, as the sticker says here, I don't know if you can see that, one pound. And it looks literally brand new, the spine isn't broken or anything, I'm not sure if anyone read this copy, not that it really matters. Um, and I picked this up in a charity shop, uh, Cancer Research UK, in Stowe Market, which is in Suffolk. So I went on like a little countryside cottage weekend away with some of my friends, had the nicest time and we popped into Stow Market which was the nearest town and looked in some of the charity shops and this book jumped out at me because I've heard of this and I've seen it around a lot on lists of Greek myth retellings but I've never read it myself. It's a retelling of the Hades and Persephone myth and Meg Cabot you may remember as the author of The Princess Diaries uh, which I did read as a kid and I also read her, I can't remember what it was called but she was like a ghost whisperer and I loved those books when I was a kid. So I'll be interested to see what Meg Cabot does with a kind of teen retelling of Hades and Persephone. It's a myth I see retold a lot but I often have quite mixed feelings about it so yeah I'll, I'll be interested to see what she does with it um, and hopefully it's not too outdated because it did come out in 2011 and YA has changed a little bit since then. So yeah basically Hades and Persephone by a kind of classic children teen author that I would just be curious to finally for my own opinion on. I then have two books I picked up in a more local charity shop and I had such a good day the day that I got these two books because I also found two books for my friend Jill's Christmas so that charity shop was just really on it with their book selection and the first one is an English ghost story by Kim Newman and this again is in fantastic condition and it may never have been read but it is as the title suggests a ghost story and I've been really in the mood for these kind of uh, creepy ghost story books of late. I had never heard of this before so I was completely going on the blurb which says the near moors a dysfunctional British nuclear family seek to solve their problems and start a new life away from the city in the sleepy Somerset countryside. At first their perfect new home seems to embrace them, its endless charms creating a rare peace and harmony within the family, but as they go closer the house begins to turn on them and seems to know just how to hurt them the most, threatening to destroy them from the inside out. I love a haunting house story. Like. Even if it's one of those stories where you're not sure if the house is haunted or not. I used to love the TV series A Haunting when I was a teenager, which was kind of the same concept. And yeah, ever since then I've been super into those kind of stories. So hopefully this is a good one. I then have a book that I had actually heard of. And that's Labyrinth Lost by Zoreda Cordova. We follow a young girl who is one in a long line of brujas. And I believe this one is kind of based in like South American cultures and folklore and our protagonist is Latinx. I've certainly seen it doing the rounds on booktube and it was on my radar so I was really pleased to see this kind of again brand spanking new looking hardback in my charity shop. It's about Alex who is a bruja, the most powerful witch in a generation and she hates magic. At her death day celebration Alex performs a spell to rid herself of her power but it backfires. Her whole family vanishes into thin air leaving her alone with Nova, a brujo boy she can't trust. A boy whose intentions are as dark as the strange markings on his skin. The only way to get her family back is to travel with Nova to Los Lagos, a land in between as dark as Limbo and as strange as Wonderland. So yeah, you know I love me a good fantasy story. But then I have one more secondhand book I picked up in a charity shop before the two that I purchased for myself online but were secondhand and that is a book by Nora Roberts, Stars of Fortune. I think this is the first in a series and I've never read any Nora Roberts before. But from what I'm aware, I think they're kind of like adult fantasy romances set in the modern day. Imagine if that was just completely wrong and these are like historical thrillers. I mean, that is not the impression this front cover gives, but uh, I don't know where I'm getting that except from the back of this blurb. Which if I look at confirms, yes, this is the first in the series. I should have double checked that before. First in the Guardians trilogy, Sasha Riggs is a reclusive artist hunted by vivid dreams that she turns into extraordinary paintings. Desperate to understand her visions, she finds the courage to leave home and travel to the Greek island of Corfu. She has only just arrived when she encounters Bran Killian, a handsome Irishman they have never met before but Sasha knows Bran only too well because this is the man from her dreams. The man she has painted over and over again and then apparently they have to embark on a dark quest. So I don't know how adult 
this is when it comes to romance. Like, I don't know if this is also kind of smutty. I honestly have no idea. I just know that Nora Roberts is actually pretty famous and it would be fun to give one of her books a shot. I equally like the idea that it's set in Greece. It may have absolutely no reference to um, ancient Greece or Greek mythology, but I always like the chance. So yeah, I'm, I'm excited to give Nora Roberts a shot. We then, like I mentioned, have two books I did order myself online secondhand, which are these. The first one is The Battle of the Sun by Jeanette Winderson. Then do you know that Jeanette Winderson wrote a middle grade book back in like 2009, which is when this came out? Because I didn't. And Jeanette Winterson is one of my favourite adult authors. I adore Jeanette Winterson. She writes a lot of like weird, whimsical, magical realism, um, either set in historical periods or the modern day. She kind of um, tackles both. <laughs> But I did not know that she'd written a middle grade. This is certainly not what she is famous for. However, somebody mentioned they were reading this to me at some point on uh, Twitter. And at that time I did add it to my wish list. but because recently I've been really enjoying middle grade, I thought now was the time to pick up a copy and I found this one second hand. I honestly don't know what it's about other than it's children's fantasy by Jeanette Winderson and that was enough for me to pick it up. I honestly cannot imagine Jeanette Winderson's adult prose in a children's book, so I don't know what to expect from this at all. Like, is there a reason it's not more famous? Is it not that great? Or is this in fact just a masterpiece I've never heard of and also... So I just told you I ordered the second hand online and I've just noticed it has two dust jackets. I don't think that was intentional. Uh, whoever has sold this to me has accidentally sent two dust jackets, cool cool, extra protection, whatever. This one's actually set in London and I do love books set in London because I live in London and I really like London. And we follow Jack, a young boy who's kidnapped by a magus who's trying to turn London to the city of gold. Um, but Jack is not a willing assistant and instead he embarks on a magical adventure to save the city, release a dragon and set free seven other boys kidnapped in the past. There's a dragon. Oh, I'm definitely going to be reading this very, very soon. Super excited. Then lastly for the second hand section of this book haul is Beyond Heaving Bosoms. This is a non-fiction book all about the romance genre and actually how subversive or feminist it can be giving a sort of like academic analysis to the romance genre. Super random. I actually picked this up because recently I read this book. Oh, are you going to come out? Virgin Envy, which is an essay collection all about the concept of virginity in different media, whether it be like films or novels. And one of the essays mentioned this book and I thought, hey, I am a recent convert to the romance genre. I have read so much romance literature this year. I love a good academic analysis of anything, basically. So I would love to read a non-fiction book about romance. I think this just sounds so interesting. The back says we do it in the dark under the sheets with a pen light. We wear sunglasses and baseball hat at the bookstore. We have a special place where we store them. Let's face it, not many folks are willing to publicly admit they love romance novels. Thank goodness for booktube, hopefully breaking down those <laughs> stigmas. Meanwhile, romance continues to be the best-selling fiction genre and that is so interesting because yes, the kind of upper echelons of the literature world are so dismissive of romance and is that largely in part because it's mainly read by women and written by women? Probably, because historically that is true of genres written and read by women, they are often dismissed. So yeah, really, really intrigued by this. We then have three books that I got out of the library and the first two are graphic novels and they're both queer graphic novels which is super exciting and hopefully I will get to them during the Queer Lit Readathon. I am going to film a TBR for that today so it may already be up or it may be up next. And the first one is The Woods. Um, this is volume one in the Arrow comic book series. So this one's more of a traditional comic book and from what I can tell this is kind of like a queer sci-fi horror comic and I love horror comics. Um, they are one of my favourite genre of, of comic book. I love a good creepy horror comic and this is about like a, a basically an entire school of students and teachers and staff who are suddenly like transported either in time or just to like a like sort of parallel creepy world. I'm not quite sure and um, but they end up somewhere where there are monsters and strange technologies and they have to survive so yeah I'm intrigued by this. That's what some of the artwork looks like inside. Really good creepy colour palette. There, there is some actual like characters doing some things and talking. But other than that, I don't know much else. I just spotted it on the bookshelf and what I like about my library is that it has some little LGBT stickers on um, the comic books and graphic novels so I can sort of seek out queer content when I'm there. 
And I did the same for this, which is Dead India, The Watcher's Test. This is again volume one in this series by Hamish Steele. And this actually has a trans main character. I believe this character here is a trans man. Um, and then I believe there's other queer rep in here as well. But I think it is particularly hard to find trans representation. So that's really good to see. Um, and I'll be intrigued to see what else is going on. This again is science fiction, but I think it's more like comedic science fiction, sorry about that glare, where a group of young people who work in a theme park discover a portal to hell. Like that's, yep, yeah, that's done, I'm gonna read it. Um, if you want a little glimpse of the art inside, it's very like cartoonish and stylistic, it looks really fun and quirky and like it will be suited to this quite like weird and wacky comedic narrative and yeah like I said hopefully we'll read both of those during the Queer Lit Readathon and share my thoughts with you and then I picked up a novel and that is Things We Lost in the Fire by Mariana Enriquez and this is actually a translated novel that was translated from the Spanish into English and I've heard really good things about it and this author what the blurb says is that from the safety of her home in a rundown suburb of Buenos Aires, a woman watches a teenage girl raises her five-year-old son, the dirty kid on the street. They sleep outside surrounded by pimps and dealers, worshippers of the occult and corrupt police. One day mother and child are gone and the body of a boy is found in the neighbourhood. Is his death part of an unfathomable ritual or a gangland murder? Could this boy be the dirty kid and if so is his mother a victim too? or an accomplice or his killer. So from what I gather this is some sort of like literary mystery novel and yeah I'm just very intrigued by it so when I saw that my library had a copy I decided to give it a shot. But those are all the books that I have either bought myself secondhand recently, sorry plant, or borrowed from the library. Let me know if you've read any of these or are interested in reading any of these, I'd love to chat about them with you. And until next time happy reading, I'll see you all again soon, bye guys!